Oh, uh, so for the equal signs, we generally use just equals, plain equals, when we're not talking about modular congruences, like if 2 plus 8 is equal to 10, but we generally use three lines if we're working in like a mod. Like for example, if we're talking about 2 is congruent to 11 mod 9, then when we say congruent to, we use equals. Sorry, we use the three lines instead of the two lines. Do I live in the North Pole? Um, probably not, although there's a small chance I do. Oh, uh, uh. Stephanie, you're muted. <laughs> oh, I don't know why the Chinese remainder theorem is called the Chinese remainder theorem. Maybe some famous Chinese mathematician just. Wait, no, I think, he, sure. I think um, he's asking why the number from one of the problems has to be prime, I think. Oh, they don't have to be prime. They just have to be relatively prime. Because oh. this, way you, uh, this way you can actually have an inverse, as I showed you guys earlier. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to be starting in about one to two minutes, so, yes. How old am I? Um, I am between 13 and 29 years old. Let's see. Uh, you, I have met Santa. I've never met Santa, so if you want to describe him, you can feel free. Um, am I Merlin? I'm Merlin, yes. I'm always Merlin. All right. We're going to be starting in about one minute, so, yep. And today we're going to be covering sets. Yeah, mm, let's see, let me make sure everything works real quick. <sighs> Oops. Let's see. Uh, oh. Okay, so now that it's 305, I guess you guys have hopefully had your four or five minute break. And now that you guys are done doing whatever, like digging holes in your yard or something, like I like to dig holes in my yard, I hope that you guys are now ready to start combinatorics, which is a much better subject than number theory, although we'll, we'll talk about that later. All right, anyways. So yeah, today we're going to be covering sets. So um, first we're going to be talking about the definition of a set because sets sometimes appear in early AMC8 problems and sometimes they appear in late AMC8, early AMC10 problems. And actually, you can use sets all the way up to even like the IMO level. So sets are pretty important. Like you have to know them from the beginning all the way to the end. After that, we're going to be going through introductory problems, which are just like semi-simpler problems. And then we're going to be going over a bit harder problems. And then the difficulty kind of gets a lot harder at the end. So uh, we're going to call these our challenge problems. Yeah, challenge problems. Uh, hopefully you guys understand these. All right, so anyways, now we're going to move on into the theory. All right. So uh, first, what is a set? So a set is like a collection of distinct objects. So like, for example, objects can be almost anything. Like we can say the numbers two, four, and six are distinct objects. Uh, the word cat could be an object. Pretty much anything is an object. And then when you group them together, that is considered a set. So for example, here, if we wanted to group the objects two, four, and six together, we would put curly brackets around them like this. If we wanted to group the objects rich, smart, and cool, then it would be like this. So this is how you group objects together. Okay. So anyways, so, and note that they do have to be distinct. This is pretty important because I've worked with a lot of set problems 
And in my experience, I actually miss a lot of set problems because I do not realize that all the elements have to be distinct. So, so whenever you see something talking about a set, most of the time, everything is distinct. And fun fact, I'm pretty sure every, every single card in this game is actually distinct. So even the card games follow these rules. So now we're going to get into example one. So um, is the following a set? Oh, whoops. Is the following a set? 1, 23, 56, 21, 67, 85, 21, 43, and 59 and 31. So do you guys think it's a set? Or do you guys think that it's not a set? Or do you guys think it's a fire? I don't know. Yes, good job. It is not a set because the elements, there are two elements of 21 in here and sets cannot have duplicates. So technically, um, technically, if we were talking about like being really technical, we could say, oh, this, this is technically just the set like this where we only have 121. But just know that in general, you cannot have duplicate, duplicate elements in sets. So for example, this would be a set because there's no duplicate elements here. All right, so now that we've gotten here, we're going to be moving on to the next part. All right, here we go, which is talking about absolute value of S. So absolute value of S is just the number of elements in S. So absolute value can actually mean, or like these bars can actually mean a lot of different things. So, and it's important to see what's inside of them. So for example, in this case, if we have a set S, then, the, then having the bars around S represents the number of elements in S, so number of elements. However, I'm pretty sure we all know that these elements, that these bars can mean a lot of different things. So for example, if we had bars around a negative number, this would be absolute value. And if you get in further into math, when you learn about complex numbers, bars around like a complex number is the magnitude. But the thing is, since we're still talking about sets right now, Whenever we see the bars around a set, we're talking about the number of elements. Woo, number of elements. So anyways, and as you can see, these sheep are a good analogy because it, the, we're counting the sheep. Just like whenever we see the bars, we have to count the number of elements in the set S. So in example two, if the set S consists of the elements one, two, and three, what is the magnitude or the number of elements in S? And I'm curious to see if you guys can solve this an extremely difficult problem. Yes, good job. It is three. There are three elements in here, and hopefully we can all count. It is one, two, three. And of course, if you did not get three because you counted a different number of elements, don't worry, because that's what this counting class is here for, to help you guys learn to count. Because I didn't know how to count when I started math. And I still don't sometimes. Okay, next, we're going to be talking about this symbol right here, which is in. So pretty much whenever we're talking, so this is like a weird sort of notation and it kind of looks like an E, but it's like curved, curved E like this. And whenever we see a symbol like this, that's like a curved E, this means in. So for example, if we saw that X is in X with this symbol and then set S, this represents that the element X is inside the set S. So for example, let's say that we have the numbers one, two, and three, and it says one, two, and three are in set S. Well, in this case, we know that the set S contains the elements one, two, and three. However, just because one, two, and three are in set S does not mean that they are the only elements in set S. So there can still be extra elements here. All we know from this is that these elements exist inside the set. So just make sure you don't fall into that common misconception. Now we're going to be talking about some more fancy symbols. So this is a thing that's called the intersection symbol, or as I like to call it, you can call it a cap, and it represents the intersection of two sets. So for example, if we have set S and set T, then the intersection of the two sets would be the elements in both. So for example, let's say that we have the elements like R, I, C, H, P, and A. And then we want the intersection of this set with H, Q, N, I, R, C, and H. So since we're looking at the intersection or the cap of these 
of this of these two sets, the intersection is just going to be the new set that contains the elements that are in both. So for example, we can see that the elements that are in both are R, I, C, and H, because here there's also R, I, C, and H. However, the elements P, A, O, oh, okay, uh, actually that never appeared there, sorry about that. Okay, however, the elements P, A, Q, and N are not part of the intersection. So that means that there, this is the intersection of these two sets would just be rich. Wow, what a coincidence, it's also my name. So anyways, now let's go on to the example. Um, how many elements are in the set, the intersection of the sets one, two, and three with the set one, two, three, four, and five? Okay, wow, you guys are really fast, but uh, yeah, there are three elements in here. Because as we can see, the elements one, two, and three are in both but the elements four and five are only in this one. So shame on these guys. So therefore the intersection would be one, two, and three. And since there are three elements in here, our answer is three. So as you can see, it, inter since intersection means it has to be in both sets, it's kind of like, oh yeah, we have to be in this together because it has to be two of us and we're perfect. Okay, anyways. So now that we're done with intersection, we're gonna be moving on to the next part, which is union. So union looks like a cup or an upside down cap. So, and since it's literally just the intersection symbol flipped upside down, you might be able to predict that it's pretty much just the uh, opposite of the intersection. So S cup or union T represents the union of sets S and T. So for example, if we have the sets like S, T, E, P, H, N, and K, and we want the union of this set with like P, S, uh, E, H, T, A, and K, then the union of these two sets will just pretty much be all of the elements. So for example, the union of these two sets would be S, T, E, P, H, N, uh, H, N, K, and A. So even though we can see that the elements S, T, E, P, H, and K are repeated in both, oh, whoops, I forgot T. Uh, and then there's also T. Oh wait, I already said T, my bad. Anyways, so since the, although the elements S, T, E, P, H, and K are repeated in both sets, as we can see here, we do not include them twice in the union because first of all, sets can only have Sets cannot have the same object twice. And also when we consider the union, we're just considering like all the elements that are contained here, which is why I would, the union of the two sets would be S, T, E, P, H, N, K, and A. Because in, this, in, in, all, in these two sets, this is just all of the elements here. So in example four, how many elements are in the union of sets one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five? And someone may have been spamming the answer, but, uh, Oh, by the way, if you have the answer, please don't spam it too fast because uh, the chat is very fragile and it causes a lot of lag for some of us. So don't spam the chat with your answer, even if you do get it. But yes, good job, it is five. Because the union of these two sets would just be one, two, three, four, and five. So a good way to remember this would be like, in order for all of us to remain together, we must all now remain apart. So pretty much if it's in any of the sets, we still include it in the union of the two sets. Oh, and please don't paste like huge blank spaces in the chat either. Okay, anyways, but now that that's done, we're gonna be talking about one of the most important parts of sets, which is subsets. And I'm not sure why the math contest creators decided to include so many subset questions, but just know that I, I'd say like, a there, if there's a problem about sets, it's very likely that the problem author will also include something about subsets which is why it is so important to know this terminology. All right, anyways, moving on. So let's quickly look at what these are. So subsets, so pretty much a subset is a set. T. So a set T is a subset of a set S if T is contained inside of S. So for example, let's say that we have the set 
one comma two and the set one comma two comma four. So the set one comma two would be a subset of the set one comma two comma four because the elements one and two are contained inside of this set. So this set right here would be a subset of this set. Next, we're going to be talking about improper subsets. So an improper subset is going to be an, is going to contain every element of the original set. So for example, if we had the set one, two, four, the improper subset would just be one, two, four. And uh, yeah, as you might guess, there is only one improper subset, no matter what the set is. Even if, even if our set is empty, the improper subset of this is still just the empty set, I think. Probably. Anyways, so these are improper subsets. Pretty easy to remember because there's really only one of them. Now, let's look at uh, proper subsets. So proper subsets are a subset that contain all some, but not all of the elements of the original set. So pretty much it's just a set that does not, that is not an improper subset. So for example, it, it, it just, if we look at one, two, four again, it's basically any subset that is not one comma two comma four. And lastly, we're going to be looking at the power set, which is just the set of all possible subsets. So for example, if we look at one comma two, then the power set would be the null set, which is represented like this, or just the empty set, one, just the sub, a set of one, a set of two, and the set of one comma two. So this would be the power set. So now let's look at example five. How many total subsets does this big set have? And, um, excuse me. And since it might be a bit difficult to get this answer out in normal notation, if you want, you can write your number in exponential notation, like a to the b of some number. So um, how many total subsets do you think that this set has? OK, well, unfortunately, it doesn't look like anyone had it. But the answer is actually 2 to the 23. So pretty much whenever, so whenever we have a subset, for example, if we have the subset 1, 2, 4, the total number of subsets is just 2 to the power of the number of elements, so 2 cubed. If we had 1, 2, 3, 4, the total number of subsets would be 2 to the 4. If we count the number of total subsets here, if we count the number of total elements here, we can see that there are a total of 23 elements, which is why our answer is 2 to the 23 for example 5. All right, so now let's look at example 6. How many improper subsets does a set with 10 to the 10 to the 10 distinct elements have? Yes, good job. So pretty much any set only has one improper subset. So even though this set has 10 to the 10 to the 10 elements, it still only is one improper subset. All right, so now let's look at example seven. How many proper sets does the set of just one have? Okay, well actually, interestingly, the answer here is actually one because even though the improper subset is just one, we know that there are, we know, we know that the, the empty set also counts as a subset. So since there's still the empty set, the answer is one. All right, and lastly, we're going to talk about supersets. So a superset is basically the reverse of a subset. It's a set of elements containing all the elements of another set. So for example, the set one, two, five would be a superset of the set one comma two because one comma two comma five already has the elements one comma two, which is why it is a superset of one comma two. And uh, these are not used as often as subsets for some reason. So the most important part to take away from this notation are to just know the, the bars around a set as well as know what a subset is. Everything else is just kind of extra. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be waiting for a couple of seconds in case you guys want to ask something very interesting. Okay, well, it looks like our chat is surprisingly quiet right now. So we're going to be moving on to the introductory problems. Oh, not this one. And we're first going to be talking about the problem Andy's mud. 
And this is an official problem endorsed by MAA. It was definitely not made by me. So you guys can all read this problem and uh, tell me what you tell me when you guys are done reading. Okay, uh, let, let, let's ignore whatever misconceptions have happened. So anyways, I'm going to assume that you guys are finished reading the problem. But um, so as we can see, me slash Isabella have finished creating the set Andy, dirt, poop, rock, mud, and soil, which are all very related objects. So now we want to find how many of Isabella's set contain the elements mud and Andy. So if we're trying to build the subset, we know that the elements mud and Andy must both be in the set. So as we can see, we still have the elements poop, rock, dirt, and soil. However, when we're creating this subset, let's look at an individual element. Like let's say that we're looking at the element soil. We can see that the element soil can either be, in, it has two choices. It can either be in the subset or it cannot be in the subset. And actually each of these elements has the same amount of choices. So since each element has four choices to either be included in the subset or to not be included in the subset, there are two to the four different ways to create this subset. So this create makes a total of 16 different possible subsets that contain the elements of both mud and Andy. So does everyone understand? If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you said 16, yes, good job. That is correct. Smork. Okay. Anyways, now we're going to be going to Stephanie's bid for freedom, which is the next problem. And I'll give you guys some time to read this problem. Oh, and this is a picture of Stephanie running away, even though I can't draw very well, so. Uh... Okay, so anyways, hopefully now that you guys have uh, actually, I'm gonna give you guys like, this, since this is a pretty long problem, I'm gonna give you guys another 20 seconds to read the problem or so. I, I did not notice how long this problem was, so yeah. All right, so I think 20 seconds are up, so now we're going to be finishing up this problem. So we can see that Stephanie knows that the union, whoops, uh, let me quickly get my charger actually. <laughs> Give me a second guys. Uh, sorry guys, give me a second. Aha, I found it. Whew. Oops, all right, uh, let's ignore that unwanted interruption. Uh, also, that, that was an interruption. I had to make sure Stephanie didn't escape from her door, so I, I locked her door. I, I had to use the uh, computer almost out of battery as, a, um, as an interruption to make sure you guys didn't know what was going on. So hopefully you guys believe me. Anyways, so moving on. So now that we know that the intersection of the sets 18, 9, 3, and 8 with the, um, with the set 8, 88, 888, and a lot more 8s, since we know that this, the, some combination of five numbers in the union of this set must unlock the door, let's first find the union of what the set is. So if we try to find the union of the set, 
we can see that the union is actually uh, 3, 8, 9, 18, 88, and yeah, yeah, the other eight numbers. And we can see that in total, there are nine, wait, no, there are eight elements inside of this set. And we want to choose five of these. And we want to be able to choose five of these unordered in order to unlock the door. So since we have a total of, uh, oh wait, I used the wrong notation. Oh, whoops, sorry. Uh, this is supposed to be, this is the wrong notation. This is actually union like this. Anyways, so now since we know that uh, this set right here has eight different elements and we want to choose five of them, we have that there are in total eight choose five, which is equal to 56 total different possible lock combinations. So does everyone understand? If you guys have any questions, I'll say this again, feel free to ask. If you want, you can ask anonymously in the Q&A. So yeah, we encourage you to ask questions. It, it might look like it annoys us, but it really doesn't. Oh, you want me to redo the problem? Uh, okay, I'll quickly redo it. So anyways, so um, since we know that the union of the sets 18, 9, 3, and 8 with the set 8, 88, 888, and a lot more 8s, is a set of numbers that unlock the door. We first find the union of these two sets. So we can see that the union of those two sets is just the set right here, which I've just written down. So the thing is, we know that in total, this set has eight elements. And we know that the door lock requires five distinct, and we know that the door lock requires five of these numbers. Since there are a total of eight different elements and we have to choose five of them, there are eight choose five, which is equal to 56 total ways to unlock the door. Does that make sense? All right, well, hopefully that makes enough sense. So now we're good, but we're going to be moving on to the next problem. And this is the last laugh. So I'll give you guys some time to read this problem. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, that was a misconception. Oh, I meant to say distinct numbers. Oh, and by the way, here, when I say the order of the prompts does not matter, I, uh, I cannot receive the same prompt twice. So yeah, I'll give you guys some time to read the prompt. Hmm. So yeah, sorry. Uh, on the previous question, that's my bad. I should have should have made it clear that the numbers on the lock were distinct, but uh. Yeah, I guess I'll just say that now, like the numbers on the lock there have to be distinct. And here, the prompts I receive also have to be distinct, just to clear some stuff up. All right, so now that I've hopefully finished reading the problem, we're going to be quickly going on. So we can see that Rich creates 10 different prompts. So there are 10 different prompts. So we have a set with 10 different elements. And we know that I will receive some number of prompts between seven and eight. So I will either be receiving seven prompts or I will be getting eight. However, I do know for sure that I will be, so for example, this set of prompts can be set prompt one, prompt two, prompt three, four, five, six, all the way up to 10. So now, however, I also know that since I rigged the game myself, I know that I will not be receiving prompt seven. So as a result, I will not have this prompt seven right here. So therefore, we have nine different prompts that I can in total receive, nine different prompts to receive. And now, since I want to receive either seven prompts in total or eight prompts in total, I can do this in nine choose seven plus nine choose eight total ways. And if, you, and if you attended our class two weeks ago, you might know that we can simplify this by using some cool combinatorial identities. So for example, by using the uh, trivial identity or whatever it's called, we can simplify this to um, nine, choose two, nine choose one plus nine choose two. And then by using Pascal's identity, we can simplify this to uh, 10 choose two. And now we can easily solve for this to get that the answer is 45. So does everyone understand? Oh, uh, 
Okay, if you don't understand, okay, I'll quickly explain it one more time. So um, pretty much, we know that Rich creates a set of 10 different prompts. So for example, let's say that we have prompts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And I know that during the game, I will receive either 7 prompts or I will receive 8 prompts. However, if, um, however, the thing is, I also know that I won't be receiving prompt 7. Oh, whoops, this is... I also know that I will not be receiving prompt 7. So as a result, I now only have 9 other prompts that I can receive. Either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10. So there are 9 different prompts that I can receive. So if we want to get, if we want to choose 7 of these distinct prompts, there are 9 choose 7 different ways to do this. If you want to choose 8 different prompts, there are 9 choose 8 different ways to do this. And um, if you attended our class from two weeks ago, we talked about combinatorial identities. And you can use some of these to get that this is also equal to nine choose two plus nine choose one. And then further use the Pascal's identity to get that this is choose two. And from there, we can get that the answer is 45. Now, finally, we're going to be moving on to the problem set. So do know that some of these problems are fairly hard. So don't worry if you guys can't get them at first. So this is the meanest of all the subsets. So I'll give you guys some time to read the problem. How many subsets of two elements can be removed from the set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, so that the mean of the remaining numbers is six? And just to make sure you guys know that sets are even important in AMC8, I believe that this is, a, this is an AMC8 number six from a couple years ago or something like that, or maybe number 11. But yes, it is important. Sets are not just something that are very advanced. They, are also, they also appear quite a bit in like AMC8, AMC10, etc. Uh, one minute until Stephanie escapes. Good, good thing I locked her door. All right. So now that hopefully you guys have had enough time to read the problem, I'm going to be quickly. We're going to quickly do it. So we want them. So if we know that there are in total eleven different elements here. So and we know that after we remove all of the elements, sorry, we know that after we remove two of them we will have nine elements left. However, from here, we also know that, um, we know that there will be nine elements left. However, we know that the, the average of the remaining numbers is six. So after removing the two elements, the sum of the rest of the numbers should be nine times six is equal to 54. However, if we look at the current set that we have, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, we can see that the total sum of all elements is 66. So 66. So as a result, we want to find the number of ways to remove two numbers such that those two numbers add up to 12. As 66 minus 54 is equal to 12. And now all we have to do is count. So we can see that this can either be done with 1, 11, 2, 10, 3, 9, 4, 8, or five, seven. So in total, there are 12 ways to do this. So does anyone have questions? All right, so since, so since no one has any questions, we can uh, move on. Oh, why is it 12? Oh, shoot, whoops. Uh, that was my bad. Um, sorry, it's not actually 12, it's five, my bad. Because there are five different pairs. So as we can see, there are a total of five different pairs here. So the answer is five, not 12. My bad, my bad, sorry about that. Oh, where did Stephanie go? Okay, anyways, moving on. So now we're gonna be moving on to the next problem, which is fancy notation. So if S is a set, then, and the number of elements in S is equal to three, then given all of this fancy notation, what is the number of elements in S? Or what is the sum of all elements in S? And I'll give you guys some time to read the problem. Let's see. No, I am not Stephanie, in case you guys are wondering. All right, 
So now that hopefully you guys have had enough time to read the problem, I'm going to be quickly going on. So um, let's see. So first of all, we know that there are three elements in S from this condition. And this tells us that two of the elements must be 0 and 10. Right? So now all we have to do to finish the problem is figure out what the last and final element is. So then we set our eyes onto this last really weird looking condition, which is actually kind of, uh, it does not look very pretty. But let's look if we can translate it. So it says that if we have any two elements in the set S where they are not the same, then the number P plus Q is also in the set S. So for example, if we, let's say that if the set S contained the elements one and two, then three have to be in the set as well. So we know that our set has some number X, the number zero and the number 10. So let's look if we can do this, right? So based on this condition, we know that we must have X plus 10 equal to zero because given any two elements in S where they are not the same, then P plus Q must be an S. So as a result, we know that since X plus, since X and 10 are both in the set, we know that they must sum to the other element in the set, which is zero. So as a result, X is equal to negative 10. And then from here, we want to find the sum of all elements in S so we can get that negative 10 plus zero plus 10 is equal to zero. And although this problem looks very scary with all of its fancy notation, like you can see these bars here and then this weird, these weird symbols, some random not equal to and some more weird symbols. You can see that as long as you keep your calm and like make sure that you translate what all of these symbols mean into plain English, it is a lot easier to figure out the problem than it might initially seem. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask again and I'll be waiting for a couple more seconds if you have any questions. <clears throat> All right, so since no one has any, it doesn't look like anyone has any questions, I think. So we're gonna be moving on to the next problem, which is it's flaming hot. And again, this is a fairly large, this is a fairly long problem. So I'll give you guys some time to read the problem. Woohoo. And when I'm on tracing this dodo bird, I will continue with the problem. And hopefully this ample time to read, understand, and gather some ideas on how to solve it. Oh, wow, am I good at tracing. Oops. Okay, uh, I think that's good enough. Okay, so now that, now that we're done, uh, and hopefully you guys have all had enough time to read the problem, we're going to quickly continue. So we can see that I have X different chili species, so X chili species, and we can see that um, whenever we combine some number of them, then I have one of that type of bottle inside of my, um, wait, inside of my kitchen. 8,192 in total. So for example, if we consider a set of chili species where this is say chili one, chili two, chili three, chili four, all the way up to chili X, whenever we choose a sub, so let's say that we choose a subset of, whenever we choose a subset of S and we combine those chili species, I have exactly one type of bottle of that inside of my kitchen. So I can see, you know, that in, so since this is true for any subset, we know that in total, there are 8,192 total subsets uh, in S. However, during the uh, introductory, during the introductory problems, we also, oh, and the theory, we also noted that given a set with X elements, there are two to the X total subsets inside of it. So as a result, we know that there are two to the X is equal to 8,192. So now we want to solve for X. So as a result, if, uh, if you've memorized all your powers of two, like a cool kid, then um, you know that this is equal to two to the 13. So then from here, since two to the X is equal to two to the 13, we can get that X is equal to 13. And this is our final answer.
Uh, yes, if you have any questions. Uh, I'm going to wait for like another 10 seconds to see if anyone has any questions. And if not, we're going to be moving on to the candy problem. Oh, um, my kitchen, it existed yesterday, but it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, there, some stuff might have blown up in there, but maybe I'll talk about that later. Okay, uh, I don't think anyone has asked any questions, so I'm going to be moving on to the next problem, which talks about candy. And I will note that this problem is just a bit harder than the rest of them, so try to bear with me here. But, and again, this is another long problem, so I'll give you guys some more time to read the problem. I. Oh. oh yes. Uh, when it when it says the word I, that means like, for example, if if I is equal to one, it would mean first. If I is equal to two, it would mean second. If I is equal to three, it would be third. If I is equal to four, it would be fourth, and so on. All right. So now that, um, so I think hopefully you guys have had enough time to read the problem and note that this is a pretty difficult problem. So, but we're going to be starting with it anyways, and let's see if we can do it. I believe in you. Know. So anyways, we know that there are five different people. So there's guy one, guy two, guy three, and guy four. Whoops. And I will draw them in stick figure mode because why not? So we know that guy one, oh, and look. Oh, and by the way, when it says modulo five, this pretty much just means mod five, like how we just covered mods in Stephanie's class. So for example, the first guy, since I is equal to one, he takes a positive number of candies that is congruent to I mod five. So he either takes one, so he takes like one, six, 11, et cetera, candies. The second guy takes some number of like two, seven, 12 candies, and so on for the rest of the guys. So since we know that the first guy takes a number I mod five, we can say that the first guy takes 5a plus 1 candy. Since the second guy takes a number that is congruent to 2 mod 5, we can say that the second guy takes 5b plus 2 candies. And similarly, we can say that the third guy takes 5c plus 3 candies. We can say that the fourth guy takes 5d plus 4 candies. And then we can say that the fifth guy takes 5e plus 5 candies. And so from here, we know that five, we know that five times A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus 15 is equal to some number larger than 35. However, if we look here, we can see that the portion of the number is divisible by five. This portion of the number is divisible by five. So as a result, the right hand side must also be divisible by five. So we can see that since there must be um, at least 35 pieces of candy remaining, this can be equal to, uh, wait, oh yeah. So since this is divisible by five, and this is also divisible by five, we can see that this can be equal to 15, uh, 20, 25, 30, 30, all the way up to 25, 30, all the way up to, uh, I believe, all the way up to, um, give me a second, I can do math very well, 70, I think, right? Did I do this wrong? Give me a second. Uh, okay, all the way up to 65, my math. And the reason it's up to 65 is because we want there to be at least 35 pieces of candy remaining and 100 minus 35 is equal to 65. So 65 is the maximum total number of pieces of candy that are remaining. And the reason the bottom portion is 15 is because if we had say 10, then we would have a plus, if we had 10, then since 10 minus 15 is negative, then we would have a negative number of candies remaining, which would not be possible. So as a result, since we know that the right hand number must be divisible by five, and we also know that it must be between the numbers 15 and 65, we can have either 15, 20, 
20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, or 65 total candies. So does everyone get that? If you have any questions, feel free to ask. All right, so we're gonna continue from here. So since we know that this equation is true, we can now continue by saying, by subtracting 15 from both sides and dividing both sides by five. So from here, we get the A plus B plus C plus D plus E must be equal to either zero, one, two, three, all the way up to 10 total candies. And the way we did this was we subtracted 15 from both sides and we divided by five. So now, all we have to do is find the values of A, B, C, D, and E. So the first thing we should note is that each of these are non-negative integers. Other than that, there are no real restrictions on them. So as a result, since we know A plus B plus C plus D plus E is equal to some number between zero and 10. So for example, let's say that we have, no, let's say that we have one candy, right? If we have one candy and we want to split it into five different people, then we can sort of divide the bars like this. And we can see that, for example, depending on where this star ends up, this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D, and then this is E. So the number of stars in each of, or the number of candies in each of these five locations is what A, B, C, D, and E are equal to. So as a result, we can see that since we want to arrange one star or candy and four bars, there are five use one different ways to do this. Similarly, if we look at when A plus B plus C plus D is equal to two, we have that if we have two different candies and we want to divide them up into five different locations, then we will have one, two, three, four different splitters as we see that A, what A is equal to will be the number of stars in here. What B is equal to will be the number of stars in here. What C will be equal to is here, D, and then E. So as a result, since we have two stars and four bars, this is equal to six choose two. And now if we follow the pattern, we can see that this is equal in total to, uh, we can see that this is equal in total to four choose one plus five choose two plus all the way up to uh, 14 choose four. No, 14 choose 10, sorry. Oh wait, whoops, I messed up, this is five. And then this is six. All right. And now, oh, we, oh, and I forgot, we also have to add in a four choose zero here, and A plus B plus C plus D plus E is equal to zero. So now since we have this summation, four choose zero plus five choose one plus six choose two, all the way up to 14 choose 10. If, you re if we recall from two weeks ago in the flash math class, we talked about combinatorial identities, we show just how useful they are here because instead of having to count out all of these combinations by hand, we can show that this is just equal to by the hockey stick identity, 50 is 10. And then from here, all we have to do is manually calculate that to get that our final answer is 3003. So does anyone have any questions? And yes, this is a bit more difficult than normal. So don't worry if you have any questions because yeah, this is a semi, at least a pretty hard problem for this class. Oh, can't see. Uh, I'll slow down a bit. Can I go over the 65 part again? Uh, sure. So pretty much, okay, so I'm hoping that everyone understands how we get this number of candies because the first guy has one mod five, etc. So as you can see, this right here is the total number of these that these guys, these nerds over here will get to take. However, the reason that the upper, so we know that the numbers on the right hand side must be divisible by five because all numbers on the left hand side are divisible by five. However, since we know that at the end it says there are at least 35 pieces of candy remaining, that means that, and since we know that there are a total of 100 pieces of candy, at most, there can be 100, they can, these losers over here can take at most 100 minus 35 is equal to 65 total candies. So 65 is the maximum number of candies that they can take. However, if we want to look at the minimum number of candies they can take, well, let's see, right? So we know that each of them must take a positive number of candies. The minimum number of candies the first person can take is one. The, the second can take is two. The minimum for the third, for the fourth is four, and the last one is five. So as a result, 
In total, the minimum number of candies they can take is 15, which is why the lower bound is 15. And we can, and they can also take any number, any multiple of five that is in between 50 and, six, 50 and 65, which is why they can take this total number of candies. So I hope that makes sense. So does anyone have any other questions? All right, I hope that made sense as well. So now we're going to be going on to the second to last problem. This cap is too small for my size. And luckily, you see, I'm a nice person. I, 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 have, I give you guys benefits. So I'll give you guys a short problem every once in a while to make sure that you guys don't have to read too much. Oh, oh can I explain the stars and bars again? Oh, yeah. So um, pretty much, if we see, so for example, if we take A plus B plus C plus, we look at cases where A plus B plus D plus E is equal to one of zero, one, two, three to 10. So for example, the first case is where they sum up to zero, right? So in this case, we can see that since A, B, C, D, E are all non-negative, they must all be zero. So there are four choose zero total ways to do this. Now let's look at what happens if they're equal to one. Whoops, all right, plus D plus E is equal to one. So if they're all equal to one, then let's see, right? So the way we would do this is we know that it must sum to one. So let's split this up. So let's say that these different categories are how many are in A, how many are in B, how many are in C, how many are in D, and how many are in E, right? And now we want to split up. And now since we have one, since this is one over here, we want to find the number of ways to put one star in here. And then the number of candies A takes will just be he, this. The number of candies B will just be the number of stars in here, for C in here, D in here, and E in here. So since there are four different bars in one star, there are four, there are five, one total ways to do this, which is how we have to choose one. Similarly, if we do A plus B plus C plus D is equal to, plus E is equal to two, then we similarly split it up. So we have four different bars. And now since it's equal to two, we have two different stars. And the number of stars in here is A, stars in B is B, C, D, and E. And we want to find the total number of ways to arrange it for numbers A, B, C, D, and E. So as a result, since there are two stars and four bars, the number, total number of objects is six, and we want to place two of the stars down. So there's six choose two total ways to arrange the stars here. So that's how we get six choose two. And from here, we can just see that the pattern goes all the way up until 14 choose 10. And from here, we can get that the answer is 3,003. So, or any other questions? All right, so it doesn't look like anyone else has any other questions, but unfortunately, we're kind of running out of time. We only have five minutes left. So um, I want to quickly, so I'll add these last two problems to your, to your homework or problem set. And yes, we do have homework and problem sets and we can find this. And if you guys want to access any of our lecture problems or homework problems, then you can go to kidteachkid.org slash flash math class resources. And I just posted that link. And you can find all of our handouts, both for combinatorics, number theory, geometry, and algebra there. But in the meantime, if anyone has any questions, if you want me to repeat some part of the theory, repeat some part of the problem set or the introductory problems, then I'll be reviewing that right now. So feel free to tell me to like go back to something if it wasn't clear enough, or if you want me to re-explain something on like this problem, because I know that this problem was kind of confusing. The flaming hot problem. Okay. So um, let's see. All right, so pretty much, so in total, so since we have X different types of chili species, we know that there are one, so we can call these chili species in a set. So we can say this is chili species one, chili species two, chili species three, all the way up to X, and this is chili species X. Because as we can see, we have X total chili species. However, we see that it says here that every kind of chili sauce that uses any combination of the number of our chilies, including the one that has all X chili sauces in it, and one that does, cannot, that does not contain any, then we, contain we have exactly one of this type of bottle. So for example, if we chose chili species one, two, four, and five, then we have a chili species bottle for this. If we have chili species one, X minus two, and X, then we have a chili species bottle for this. If we just have a chili species bottle of just like chili species three, 
then we have a chili species model for this. So as a result, we can see that no matter which subset of this, of this following set we take, so no matter which subset we take, there's always going to be a chili species model that corresponds with it. All right. So now from here, we can see, we know that in total, the set one, two, three, four, all the way to X has two DX total subsets. And in addition, we know that since each subset has one chili species bottle, we know that there are in total 8,192 total, uh, total um, subsets. So as a result, since 8192 is equal to two to the 13, we can get that X is equal to 13. So does that make sense? Or would you like me to re-explain it? Hmm. Or is there like some specific part that you want me to quickly review? Because I know that this problem is a bit more, it's a bit less standard than some of the other problems. So feel free to ask. Oh yes, what um, X, Oh, what do you mean by X minus two part? Oh, so pretty much, um, I'm not sure if you're talking about this part, but all I mean, all I wanted to say here was that if we chose, if we chose a chili species, if we chose the following chili species of chili species one, chili species X minus two and chili species X, then there would be a chili bottle that corresponds with this. Um, I may or may not be Isabel and Stephanie anyways. And then here, since no matter which subset of chili species we choose, there will be one chili species bottle that corresponds with it. We know that there are in total 8,100, stop spamming Anderson, seriously, stop. Stop or you will be kicked for the next time. All right, so since we know that there are in total 8,192 chili species, we know that there, sorry, chili bottles, we know that in total there are also 8,192 total subsets. So since we know two to the X is equal to two to the 13, we get that X is equal to 13. So does that make sense now? Okay. Uh, well, hopefully it does because we're pretty much out of time. So thank you so much. Thank you so much all for coming. This is week four. And um, if you guys want to access any of the lecture problems or you guys want to access the homework or the problem set, I posted a link above, which is kidteachkid.org slash flash math class resources. There's also a link on our main website for the uh, recording. And if you have any questions after the class, you can always go to kidteachkid.org slash flash math class questions to ask us a question. So yeah. And um, if you have any questions, oh, I'm going to quickly answer the last question I think I saw in here. But if you guys want to go now, you can. So thanks so much for coming, guys. Bye. OK. Yeah. And the, uh, the link for the resources, I'll post it in the chat real quick if you want to look at it. It's kidteachkid.org slash flash math class questions. So if you guys want to ask questions, you can go to this link. And yeah, we'll get to you back as fast as we can. And if you guys, if you guys want to give us feedback on how well we've been doing, you can also go to kit. We also have a survey on our main website where you guys can tell us how well we've been doing. If you guys hate our class, if you guys think we should like expand to other subjects and so on. So yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.